history in Italy. I met with all the guys and girls who uh, are running the show, and their ethos about the whole um, Ovali Championship is really, um, you know, about keeping it fair, keeping it as cost-effective as possible. They're all got sealed engines, so they're all completely standard, and it's all about the rider, not about, uh, not about what um, what's underneath them. Just to cut then to the grid here, we've got Harley McCabe on pole from Luca Hopkins, Henry McCartney, Zach Weston, Ruben Bray, and Arnie Carr. Very close uh, battlers in that first race. Lake and Payne in there, Daniel Stevenson, George Bowes, Ralph Croft, Izzy Carter, and Cameron Ancliffe. Monty Hillier, Dan Deering, Kobe Garrett with no timelines up at the back. But uh, like you say, sealed engines is something you see a lot in the world of karting. And the sealed engine, it's there just to make sure that these bikes, even off the shelf, they can be competitive. Yeah, exactly that. Competitive. Everyone's the same. Uh, the rules are, you know, they're fairly strict on that the, they can't actually really do anything to the bike. The bikes are pretty standard, so um, uh, that just means that it's down to the rider now, and not about who's got the, you know, the biggest wallet from the parent side of things or anything like that. It's about the talent of the rider. So that was something that really floated my boat, and you know, when I brought it to, to Alan at the BMB. Um, you know, he was absolutely up for it straight away as well. So um, it's fantastic to see these out. I loved watching race one, and I'm really excited to watch race two now. Always oh, trouble on the line. I think there's. Has he just lost the engine? I think Monty at the back there. I think he stalled the bike. And George Bowes just in front had done the same thing. Oh, so this is all tense moments now, of course, isn't it? When the riders are lining up, they've just got to make sure they're all clear. And yeah, I think he might have just lost the engine there. Yeah, I so. think even Harley's now <laughs> stalled <laughs> it as well. Or so. Run out. A little bit of trouble on the line here, but hopefully we'll get that sorted out in just a moment. These things do happen, of course. And, well, I think we're all ready to go now. The riders ready. Green flag is about to go up, and Avali race number two. First time, of course, for 2020 in the UK gets underway. Oh, it's a good start. They're all away well, and they charge into this lovely first right hand, a nice wide corner. And we were saying earlier to some of the other riders who've uh, joined us on the mic, this first corner touch wood, I would say, of course. You never <laughs> want to jinx these things. But it is quite a good starting area, and they do seem to be riding well. Yeah, it's quite a fast turn one, which, um, which is always good for the start. You know, everyone's obviously very close together, and it's all quite tight. So uh, always a fast corner at the start is, uh, is good for, for racing. If it's tight, then that's where all the problems tend to happen. But uh, everyone's nice and cleanly away like they were in race one, uh, which is great to see. And I think it's going to be a real good battle again between Harley, Luca, and maybe Henry might be able to just sneak in and keep up with them this time. Henry McCartney's got away well. He's trying to tag onto the back of Luca Hopkins. These two riders were Hammer and Tong in the first race. Here they come. It's this fantastic aerial shot of that tight final uh, half in the penultimate corner. Down the finish straight they go, and let's see what Hopkins can do. He sets the fastest lap of the race on that first lap, but uh, Harley McCabe, who rode so well in the first race, has got the jump on the field. It's all still pretty close on that first lap. McCabe broke away in the first one, but uh, couldn't quite... Uh, couldn't quite break away from Hopkins, who certainly kept him honest in that first race. Yeah, Hopkins, uh, Luca really kept him kind of uh, honest all the way through the race. And to be honest, watching from the outside, Luca looked like he had a bit more pace. And then when the back markers got involved and uh, Luca managed to get through on Harley, it, uh, it then kind of rolls reverse. And Harley actually looked stronger than what Luca did. So um, obviously, it's always um, a little bit easier if you're following the rider in front, or you can always use them as a bit of a judge. Um, so it's interesting to watch, you know, these guys are all still learning, they're all very young, they're all between kind of 8 years old and 12. Um, some of them have got some good experience like these guys at the front, you know, they've got quite a bit of riding experience underneath them and some of the guys further down the field, not quite so much, but that's the whole point of the class, you know, to bring these riders on and to teach them how to ride a proper race bike. Well, Hopkins certainly looking good here. One thing I have noticed actually is during the day, it's, sometimes it's almost better to be in second place sometimes and not make the pass too early because a clever rider will just sit there, just watch this race leader. Like we're looking at Harley McCabe at the moment. Perhaps Hopkins, he may want to perhaps just stay there in second for a while, just learn from McCabe and see what he's doing here and not show his hand too early. Yeah, exactly that. And I think that's what was really happening in race one. I mean, it was only the fact that they caught a back marker and Harley got kind of caught up in it and, and Luca didn't. So he just kind of took the advantage while he had it. But um, it's going to be interesting to see how this one pans out. I'm sure the back markers are going to you know, come into play again. But um, that's all just part of racing. and. The riders have been really clean, actually. They've been really good with, uh, with all the other guys they've been passing, so it's been really good to see. Dan Deering, the rider in 14th place, holds his line as the leading group make their way through. And let's see, the gap just under two tenths of a second as Harley McCabe sets the fastest lap of the race, but there really isn't much in it at all now. And interesting to see now, we look at the third place man, number 31, Henry McCartney. He seems to have picked up the pace here. Now, he couldn't quite get involved with the leaders in the first race, but... He's gone away well in this one. He's not too far behind that leading group. 
Yeah, he's just losing a couple, of, not even quite two tenths, just over a tenth on that last lap, so he's absolutely picked his pace up, so we'll see if he can pull himself up to them front two. Like I say, it's always easier to follow than it is to lead. It's very, very difficult to lead races, so uh, you know, Harley's doing a great job, but it'd be great to see if uh, Henry can get involved in this little fight as well. And we're seeing the excitement here of a, what you might say is a stock-based bike, because they're all the same, and it's all down to the rider, and this battle here we've got looks like Zach Weston's Ruben Bray Arnie car in there as well as you head towards the final corner now the right hander and yeah, then that's Arnie car in six just coming across the line just there uh, and then we've got Ruben Bray sorry Arnie car's in fifth and there's Ruben Bray Daniel Stevenson Lakin Payne and George Bowes all together so that's a great little battle midfield battle there Arnie car he's got some uh, pressure here now he's got to try and break away from this little group of riders Harley McCabe, Luke Hopkins and Henry McCartney are clear of this battle. Oh, and switching down the inside. That looked like Ruben Bray, possibly. Nice little move there, but doesn't quite come off. Harley McCabe, incidentally, setting the fastest lap of the race, 51.06. But Hopkins, less than two tenths of a second slower, so there's not much in it. And they're just going up towards the finish line now. Hopkins is back on the charge. Look at them go through. They really are charging. They seem to have broke away a little bit from Henry McCartney, but not by very much and Hopkins sets the fastest lap of the race so these riders equal on pace I think uh, I think Henry had a bit of a made a mistake on that last lap he was quite a bit slower than what he was um, the previous lap and the other two actually went slightly faster again so uh, Luca did the fastest lap on a 50.8 which is actually uh, slightly faster than what they did in qualifying uh, pole was a 50.89 Luca's just done a 50.85 and I think Luca's actually quite fast with his last section you know this last couple of corners and the run on to start and finish he looks a little bit stronger than what Harley does so uh, maybe he's just saving himself ready for the last lap dash. And we've got some slow riders in front there, so they've got that to contend with as well. Uh, one of the things we were looking at, one of the themes earlier, Peter, with the uh, the riding as well is speed is one thing. Of course, lots of riders are quick, but then the race craft sometimes is another. And um, this sort of grassroots youth series for these young riders, it's a great chance for them just to learn a bit more about how to race. Of course, pros like yourself, well drilled in race craft, and this is the, the learning curve. Exactly that, you know, and these guys have got much more of a leg up than what I had when I started. You know, when, when I was racing at this kind of age, although I wasn't even, you know, I was older than these guys <laughs> when I started racing, so uh, they're well ahead of where I was, but all we had was mini moto racing. So, you know, these guys are actually riding a proper racing motorcycle that's been designed properly and really just feel like a, a proper superbike, you know. That's why you find a lot of the professionals riding them, like myself, uh, like Richard Cooper, like Lee Jackson, Alex uh, Marquez, Alex Rins. There's loads of them going into the back markers just now. And all, all these riders are using them because, although they're small, they're very, very much like a proper full-size you know, racing motorcycle. So these guys really are learning their racecraft on a bike that feels like a superbike. Well, that's uh, quite right there. I mean, this is the... Oh, well, it's a new bike for me, really. It's the first time I've been to the mini bikes this year, and it's, it certainly looks the part. And again, some more good race craft there as McCabe and Hopkins nip their way through those midfield runners. I think it was Lake and Payne and Ralph Croft possibly going a lap down, having their own battle. And oh, McCabe pulls away slightly, but still not by very much. A small mistake from McCabe, and that would allow Hopkins right back in there. Uh, just talking about race craft, I was watching them lap the, uh, the slower riders before. And really interesting to see how well they're coping with the traffic, certainly keeping a cool head as McCabe still leads the way. Hopkins shadowing there in second. Just Not want to give a little shout out as well to Kobe Garber. He should be here. He was signed up, ready to go. He's been really improving over the last few weeks. And unfortunately, uh, had a spill last week and broke his collarbone. So he's here watching today, uh, supporting all his friends in the Ovali Cup. But uh, unfortunately, only watching for him. Fingers crossed he'll be back uh, sooner rather than later. So a big shout out to, to Kobe Garbett. Yeah, that's echoed there, Kobe Garbett. Get well soon. We hope to see you on track later in the year. Still this battle with McCabe and Hopkins. McCartney still third, dropping the pace slightly from Zach Weston, Ruben Bray, Arnie Carr in sixth, and Bray up to fifth place now. Luke Hopkins, fastest lap of the race again that last lap, 50.7, and it's over a tenth faster, nearly two tenths faster than uh, the pole time from qualifying. So uh, Luke is really on a charge now to try and get that gap back. Not much in it at all there. Here we go, Ralph Croft and Cameron Ancliffe having a look as they battle at the end of the top ten. And uh, oh, they are really scrapping uh, good footage here as they make their way through that dogleg hairpin. It really is a lot tighter than it looks. Still McCabe and Hopkins scrapping away but further down well, that great little battles everywhere all the way down the grid it's great to see and the interest these riders we're looking at here they were lapped by the leaders a few moments ago and one of the things i always like to say is these riders 
for want of a better phrase, the bat markers, they're still having their own race. It's just as important to them as the leaders, and the, they were sensible getting through the slower traffic. Yeah, absolutely. I think everyone's been really showing some great levels of maturity. Um, so I'm really, I'm really impressed with all the riders so far. They've been absolutely fantastic. Um, Craig is just seeing people getting set off, sat up all over. Cameron got set up there as uh, Arnie and Ruben went through. But it's um, no, honestly, all the way through, I've been really. I'm not just saying it, but all the guys have been absolutely fantastic. So it's great to see. All the parents have been good, which is what I want to see as well. You know, it's all about the kids. It's not about the parents, and uh, everyone's been behaving themselves so far. So so far, so good. I see that's a good shout out because, of course, we've had this unique situation this year with the coronavirus where the race has been put off for so long and everyone's been a bit stir crazy almost, you might say. I think that you all have in your head that idea that it might have been all hell breaking loose at the first round, but it does seem, everyone does seem to have been quite sensible today, Touchwood. Well, these guys have all been good, so we'll see what pretty Superbike turns out in a couple of weeks' time. Oh, yeah. But uh, no, it's really, really good. And again, Luca Hopkins, to close that gap, he's just gone faster again, 50.59. Um, absolutely mega uh, riding by Luca there to pull that gap back to, to Harley. Let's have a look at Luke Hopkins, and he is faster at the moment, but he can't find a way through. He tries, though, into the hairpin. That was a brave move there. Didn't quite come off as they make their way towards that penultimate corner. This corner here, it's an interesting part of the track. You've almost got to set the pass up three or four corners in advance as Hopkins again has a look onto the final lap. It's going to be interesting now, you know, this is the last lap. Um, Harley's not seen Luca all the way through, and Luca knows exactly where Harley's strong and where he's not, uh, where maybe he could make a pass or where he couldn't. So um, we're going to see now if Luca's been able to find a way through um, and make that lunge in. Here we go into the tight left-hand of the first of the real obvious overtaking opportunities here. This lovely left-hander carried a lot of speed through there and shoved it all over the place now. Luca Hopkins trying to find an opening as they go into the dog leg. Looks like the cave's got that line covered as they go through, down past the pits. And this is going to be the last realistic... Oh, he almost stands the bike up there. Hopkins really going for it into the hairpin. Doesn't quite come off. She's going to have to try and line him up now. On to the finish line straight. Hopkins tries the outside. Cuts to the inside, but it's not going to be enough. As Harley McCabe takes the win. And I'll tell you what, Hopkins second place there. But uh, <laughs> certainly not for lack of trying. Absolutely not, you know. And um, fantastic riding by both of them. Really hard for, for Harley there because he's you know he's out front, he's just got to keep doing his thing. He doesn't he knows there's someone there, he'll hear them. But for him to keep his head, he didn't make one mistake the whole way through that race. That's um, a really impressive mature ride from Harley, so uh, absolutely well done. And Luca just unfortunately couldn't quite find his way through, you know. It's uh, just one of them things. We've said it earlier, or you said it earlier, it's not the easiest track to pass on, that's for sure. Um, but these guys, uh, you know, they're trying the best and, uh, you know, there was no last minute lunges and they all went wrong. So uh, well done for Luca and, uh, and also for Harley as well. And I think it was Henry that ended up in third. Yeah, Henry was in third. Uh, Zach Weston fourth. Ruben in fifth. Uh, Arnie Carr in sixth. Dan Stevenson seventh. George Bowes in eighth. Leighton Payne in ninth. Ralph Croft in tenth. Cameron Ancliffe, Monte Hillier, Izzy Carter and Dan Deering's just coming across the line now. It's his first time on tarmac, so uh, nice and steady away for Dan. He's done actually a great job, and um, yeah, absolutely great to see. There we are. So Pete Hickman, the uh, of course the man behind the O'Valley series in the UK, and perhaps uh, just to put in a rider's head on for a moment. What's it been like out there for yourself today? <laughs> it's been alright to be fair. I keep getting beaten though. I don't like it. What happened it's to that? <laughs> uh, that previous race was interesting. You were closing up on the leader, and then. Just yeah, I, um, I actually lost my knee slider. I've got, I've got excuse. I've got, all races have got a good excuse book. I lost my knee slider on lap one. I clipped the curb down here on one of the last corners. And, uh, yeah, that was kind of the end of my race, really. You can't really ride properly without it. But um, I kind of dropped back to have a bit of a race with Jordan. And then Dan, I think, was thinking the same thing. So he was dropping back as well. So I thought maybe I could catch Dan unawares. But, uh, sorry, Reese un unawares. So, um, but he didn't. He, as, soon, as soon as he realized I was close again, Reese was gone. So, uh, no, riding really good. So here we go for our next race today. Thanks.